Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at Rivian. Rivian has laid off battery development workers to save money for the next gen model. Amongst those layoffs, Rivian includes its former lead cell engineer. Rivian has cut 20% of its employees from its in house battery department as it looks for ways to save capital to aid with design and development of the next generation R2 platform. It is understood that one of the 20 employees Rivian laid off was Victor Patrati, that led cell engineer who had formerly served as senior management at Tesla. The company has previously said that it will produce its own batteries at its large factory in Georgia. But these lays off has raised questions about whether or not these plans will go ahead. Rivian currently sources batteries from Samsung SDI in South Korea before assembling them in the factory in Illinois. In a statement issued to Benzingo about the lays off, a Rivian spokesperson said they impact less than 8% of its battery team. And we've got a statement from the spokesperson, and I quote, While we place very high value on the cell engineering competence that we build at Rivian, we're focusing on the team on R2 platform and its defined program. Now, Rivian's next generation EV, known as the R2, will follow in the footsteps of the R1T and R1S, but be more affordable and cheaper in size. While the brand's current models have been well received by pundits and customers, they remain too expensive for the most newer car buyers. For the general market, Rivian are an expensive brand, and they need to be more affordable, more approachable. A key factor that will allow Rivian to make its R2 models significantly cheaper will be the simple electrical architecture with 60% fewer ECU and a 25% reduction in the length of the wiring. The first model in the newly family is expected to be an SUV known as the R2S. It will be similar in size to the Tesla Model Y, but like the R1S and have a focus on off-road performances. It will be unveiled next year before reaching the hands of customers in 2026. Prices are expected to start around 40000 and should top out at 60000 Now this is what's very fascinating. This car will be a direct competitor to the Tesla Model Y, which will mean it will be a competitor to the Volvo EX30. It will be a competitor to the Polestar 4. This vehicle will be a great competitor. Given the fact that Rivian is already well received within the USA, this brand is looking to expand rapidly within Europe and knowing that Rivian are really good at designing their vehicles to look in a very specific way. They'll have an edge in the market, I do believe. They already have an edge in the market, in the SUV market, in the off-road pickup truck market. And Rivian has quickly taken up those customers who are usually buying a big SUV or a pickup truck from Ford. And I believe Rivian is doing that with ease. Rivian is also providing customers with something that Tesla has not provided them with. Tesla has not fully made a pickup truck. Fair enough, the Cybertruck is on its way, but it's not here yet. And it's been heavily delayed. Rivian has been capitalized on that. They delivered 20,000 vehicles last year. They're looking to deliver 50,000 this year. How much are they looking to deliver in 2024? 75,000 vehicles? 100,000 vehicles? And whilst there's been some lovely concepts out there, we can expect this vehicle to be smaller than the current Rivian R1S. We can also expect the pickup truck version of this to be quite smaller as well. Once again, Rivian is filling these gaps. There's no news on the market whether or not they'll ever make a sedan because mostly their market is pickup truck and SUV. They like to make larger vehicles. They're an American brand and you can expect that. Not to mention, I am really curious to find out what this vehicle will potentially look like. Hopefully, by next year it will be on veal. But keep in mind, we're not getting this vehicle until 2026. But as you can see, the company is taking this serious by already cutting workflow. They're cutting down on costs to make sure that this vehicle is made perfectly, to make sure that they deliver as promised, to make sure that this vehicle is at its best ability. The nice thing about Rivian is that it will continue to sell these big expensive SUV because it's targeting an audience that want an expensive big SUV or an expensive big pickup truck. So Rivian is in a golden position to be honest and its revenues have been rising. Like I said, last year, 2022, they delivered 20,000 vehicles. Starting off the first quarter, there were just an estimate around 95 million. 
they slowly started delivering more vehicles. And as it went up towards the end of the year, the last quarter last year, they made 663 million. The incredible thing is that they started this year strong. The revenue was almost identical at 661 million, but they did incredible for the second quarter to beat it 1.12 billion dollars. But they kept on smashing our expectations, of course. They did it again, 1.34 billion in the third quarter. Now we're going for the fourth quarter. They're looking to deliver 50,000 vehicles all across this year, if not more, which means that we're looking for the final quarter revenue to be hitting somewhere around 1.5, 1.6 billion dollars. That's absolutely incredible. They're growing in revenue. But keep in mind, at the same time, they're losing cash on hand and the debt is rising slowly but surely. Since the end of last year, the debt has risen from $961 million to $2.4 billion. The good thing, however, they still have a decent amount of cash on hand. Currently sitting around $9 billion, I believe. But as for the final quarter, that's going to lower. Try to keep in mind that the shares outstanding have been going up as well. So I believe this is how they issue new shares, and this slowly dilutes the, the stock itself. So the shares are getting close to $1 billion in shares, and the price currently sits at $9. Now, my perfect time for buying this company was when it was around $10 to $15. It's currently at $9. A company like this, which is looking to easily achieve over $4 billion in this year in revenue, not profit, just revenue, I'd say they're just right on ideal pricing. They're not too overvalued, but they're not too undervalued. If they were at 15 billion, that would be a little bit undervalued. If they were at 25 billion, that would be a little bit overvalued. Or even 20 billion would be overvalued. Around 18 billion is the ideal valuation for this company, just below 20 billion. But all the other metrics that investors like to see, free cash flow, it's not doing particularly well. But the good news is that free cash flow, since the start of this quarter, it has been being reduced, the negative free cash flow. You can see the first quarter was 1.8 billion, second quarter 1.6, third quarter 1 billion. So if they continue to reduce the negative free cash flow, investors are going to like this. The incredible thing about this company is that for some reason, it seems to have a decent amount of stock-based compensation. I'm actually surprised at this for a company that is still being developed, that need more time. They need to reinvest every money. They seem to be doing somewhat okay on stock-based compensation, which I think is unnecessary. But then again, you remember the IPO was quite insane. It was, what, 90 billion, 100 billion or something? So I think investors are sort of expecting some of that money back a little bit sooner than they'd like. And stock-based compensation, I think that's just covering covering Rivian's back. But free cash flow, negative, it is being reduced. The EBITDA, that's negative as well, and that's going to remain negative for quite some time. That includes net income, but it is slowly, slowly looking to turn around, but it will take some years. If Rivian is looking to release the cheaper vehicles in 2026, we're looking at 2027, 2028, before this company start to do rather well. So another five to 10 years, but that's why it's so fantastic that I'm investing in Rivian. And this is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. But I like a company like this that's taking their time to develop. But I want to see them reinvesting that money back into the company more. But listen, that is it for today. Yes, I do believe Rivian is not overvalue anymore. I can't believe I'm saying it, but they're not overvalue anymore for $18 billion in market cap. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.